This is the second part of Lesson 14, and, and in this uh, situation, we're going to consider the periodic uh, review inventory model, and again, we have variable demand. Uh, again, everything else is constant. Lead time is constant. The time between reviews is constant. I'll talk about that in just a second. And again, as before with our EOQ model, we have instantaneous uh, resupply uh, as, we, as we go forward. Now, you'll remember in the periodic review model, you'll remember the following. Um, it, every, at a specific point in time, a, a person or someone takes counts, physically counts inventory that's on hand. And again, that's that period of time is this T sub B or the time between uh, inventory. So you can see that's a regular interval where um, inventory is, is counted first here at this point. And then again at this point, but it's at the regular interval at the same time in between every time that that inventory is counted. So the inventory would be counted the third time here. The inventory would be counted the fourth time here. Now, you'll notice also when the inventory is counted, there is a different uh, level of inventory that's on hand. So at this first period, this, uh, this level that corresponds to that, that's the inventory that's on hand. We make the, we make the, an order and then that order is instantaneously resupplied up to the level and then for the second period when we count the inventory it's at this level and again there's been um, uh, a little bit there's been greater demand during that second period than there was during the first period so what you'll see is in, in this particular situation the order quantity is going to be a function of the inventory that we have on hand. So at period one, when we counted the inventory, that's going to lead to a, an order quantity that we're going to call Q1. And again, you can hopefully you can see the relationship. Q1 is this amount here. That's, that's ordered to get us back to this level of, of Q, all right? And the, in the second period, we said that the demand was greater than it was uh, in, the, in the first period, and so the order quantity in the second period is greater than the order quantity in the first period and so forth, and of course, you can see here out at the third period, the uh, order quantity is uh, very, very much less uh, was ordered. And so <clears throat> the, or the quantity that was ordered is much smaller. So in this particular situation for the periodic inventory model, we're going to be trying to find that the order quantity, not the reorder point. So, and that order quantity is going to vary. So, we're, for the periodic inventory model, we're finding Q, the order quantity, not the reorder point. So, let's see the equation for this. And again, as before, we're, 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 our demand is going to have the normal distribution, the um, mean of the normal distribution, mu, if you will, is going to be the average demand rate, the standard deviation of demand, just like before. We're going to have lead time that will be known or given. And now we have a new parameter, which is the fixed time between orders. And we still are going to have to know our standard deviation that uh, corresponds to the uh, desired service level. In, in this case, our safety stock takes a slightly, slightly different form. It's, we're going to now add uh, 
to our lead time under the under the radical we're going to add this time uh, between uh, inventory counts to determine our safety stock and so to, in order to uh, determine the, the order quantity for a specific period, it's got uh, four terms to it. The order cycle demand, which is average demand rate times that time between uh, orders, time between uh, inventory or time between orders, our uh, lead demand time. This is the amount that we would expect then we're going to add our safety stock. And then from this amount, we subtract whatever is the current inventory. And actually, there's a small, little small error. This should be I sub I. So it's the inventory that's on hand during that period I. And that's how we're going to calculate that. So let's look again at another example out of the textbook. And this is example 13.7 on page 571, and it's the KVS pharmacy problem. The KVS pharmacy stocks a particular brand of over-the-counter flu and cold medicine. The average demand for the medicine is six packages per day with a standard deviation of 1.2 packages. A vendor for the pharmaceutical company checks the KVS stock every 60 days. <clears throat> During one, of the, one visit, the store had eight packages in stock. The lead time to receive the order is five days, and the, the management wishes the, uh, to maintain a 95% service, service level. Okay, so let's work through this. All right, so what are the terms that we need to know? First of all, we need to know the uh, average daily demand, which in the problem, if you're following along in your textbook, um, the average daily demand is six packages, I'm going to abbreviate that, P per day, per day. The standard deviation of the demand is going to be 1.2. Packages per day. The um, time between inventory to counts or the time between orders is 60 days. We know the lead time is five days. And we know our ending inventory for this period is eight packages. The only thing we don't know, but actually we do know this from our previous work, is that our um, value for Z that corresponds to a 0.95% service level is from what we did last in the last video, the last example is still 1.65 and so now we're ready to solve our problem so uh, we want to calculate the order quantity and that's going to be um, d bar times t sub b plus d bar times our lead time plus Z times the standard deviation of demand times the square root of T sub B plus the lead time and then from that we're going to subtract whatever our ending inventory is. We're going to substitute all of this in. So D bar is 6 T 
sub b is 60 plus 6 times our lead time, which is 5, plus 1.65 times our standard deviation, which is 1.2 times the square root, I'm running out of space, of, I'm just going to add these to, well, 60, I mean, I won't add them together yet, 60 plus 5, and from that, we're going to subtract our ending, our current inventory, which is 8. And when we do the arithmetic, this turns out to be 398 packages. So this is the order quantity for this period. It's not the reorder point. It's the amount that you would for this period to maintain that safety stock. Now, let's suppose instead of 95% service level, and, and of course, before I go forward, I want to point out that, um, that this amount, this quantity, is the safety stock, just as similar to what it was before. This quantity, 1.65 times 1.2 times the square root of 65 is the um, safety stock. And so 65. That's it's sixteen. It's actually only uh, 16 packages, because you can see that this is 6 times 65. Um, which is um, 400 and, hold on. Three hundred and ninety so it's three this this uh, quantity is three hundred and ninety plus sixteen which is the safety stock minus the eight which is on the end and that leads to three hundred and ninety eight packages. Now, let's suppose that in, instead of 95%, we wanted a 99% service rate. Well, that you should ask yourself, will that make the order quantity go up or go down? And it, it hopefully you can understand that it would make it go up because this, this means there's less chance of a stock out than in the previous case. And how would we determine that what that Z value is for 99%? And... We go to our table, and our table doesn't go far enough in this case. So, but in any case, um, you would look. At, you would go to your zero. Um, if you if you wanted a 97 percent uh, service level, we would find uh, this value here, and that z value would be 1.89 uh, for a 97 percent service level. And again, here's a summary of the um, of the work that's done. And again, uh, this value is 16, which is our safety stock. The safety stock doesn't include this uh, current inventory. The safety stock is only only this 
this piece here and here, which in this case is 16 packages. <clears throat> All right, always, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. <clears throat> this is the last new material before the first exam. So um, uh, as we, <clears throat> there'll also be a video on a review for exam one. 